All right, squad. So pretty cool stuff here. I wanted to um, just just real quick. I, th I think when we're all developing paid search campaigns, we're trying to <clears throat> not give away the show at the very beginning, but we want to do right by the client. We want to achieve success fast. And there are some basic blocking and tackling things that we do here at Propellant Media um, and within our team infrastructure to reduce a ton of waste before we even launch a campaign. Um, and so I just want to go through some of these. Uh, the, some of these I think will be relatively illuminating, but not too surprising. Um, and I think you know many of the folks here will actually appreciate this because this is like a simple playbook that any professional can can utilize when launching a campaign. And, and typically this does, kid you not, reduce up to 70% of waste even before you launch a campaign. Uh, and so you just kind of hear me out for a second. A uh, couple things, competitor research, I actually forgot to add that because um, that is actually a really big one. So hear me out for a second. The first thing that I typically do and our team does is we actually have a discovery call with our client we have this really cool, I mean, it's very simple, but it's a good questionnaire. So we have full context on the client's goals, objectives, keywords that are important to them, those types of things. But this helps set the stage for us to know what our North Star is. We're building the campaign. So that's the first thing that we're, we're going to take a client to. Um, and so, you know, I don't have to, you know, go to the actual link. You all can go directly to the link itself, but it's propellant.media uh, client question. You know, since I'm here, I might as well. So we'll go there. We'll go back to the actual link itself. And it's just a good framework, if that makes sense, um, when you're trying to just get basic information from a client. Um, and we use that not just for a client to fill out, but also as we're asking the client individual questions um, as we're auditing, or more importantly, as we're building out a campaign for a client. So that's the first. Second is that we are going to ensure that we have some conversion tracking set up. Um, we did uh, another video on how to do an audit, a Google Ads audit within 15 minutes, and we said the same thing. You have to have some type of uh, conversion tracking set up. I don't care if it's a, a, a really micro version, a button click, whatever. You gotta have something set up because then you don't, you have no guidance or perspective on how your campaigns are performing. So. That's super important, and also you can't utilize max CPC, or excuse me, max conversion or CPA or ROAS bid strategies for that matter. So super important. One thing a lot of folks don't do on the front end, which we actually try to do, is we actually, within this actual um, form, we actually ask the client for competitors, and we actually do those Google searches relative to the keywords to see what they show up for. Really helpful stuff because then you can use those keywords as part of the you know the ad copy but even more importantly you can use that to weed out keywords that you think are probably not going to be relevant if there are certain terms within the within that organization's ad copy when it shows up we also like um the next thing that we're typically doing um is when we're building out our ads you know sometimes when you're building them out and they get approved they'll start off at like an average or at you know, like a, like, a, like a bad or, you know, below average. We like our ads to be either good or, or excellent because that it vastly improves your quality score and also improves the waste, but more importantly, uh, the, the, the cost per clicks that you're bidding on. You can save anywhere from 5 to 20% just by that strategy alone. So doing sort of, if you're looking at your responsive ads, you've got to make those adjustments. And part of that is including the keywords in the ad copy when you're doing that makes a huge difference part of with that conversation is also ad extensions as well when you're bidding the camp when you're building your campaigns if you can use all the all of the ad extensions that make sense you should so call outs um you know phone call extensions location extensions rich snippets site links all of that where it makes sense you should use them uh, sometimes i won't always use site links because that diverts someone to a page that I don't believe is going to translate into more conversions for our client. But aside from that, this also makes a big difference from a click-through rate perspective. It makes a big difference from a, uh, from a CPA strategy, a CPA um, cost per action uh, bid strategy as well. So we, we do typically recommend that. Next, within your campaign settings, you have two things. Um, first, 
you have a little button where you can target people who are living in your DMA or people that have expressed an interest and live in your DMA. We like to target people that live inside of the DMA only because if I'm a plumber that li that is based, if I'm a, a plumber, I'm advertising in Charlotte and someone in Lance or Bangladesh does a search for plumbers, you know, Charlotte plumbers, I don't know if I necessarily want to show up for that term. You know, sometimes there are people that are just doing random searches and, eh, you know, in most cases you want to save as much budget as you can. This is one thing that we always put on um, to ensure that we're not showing up in other DMAs that are unintended. Even if you're targeting all the United States, people living in is the best practice to go. And, and within that vein, you also have the ability to target people that are just on the search network. The search network is just those individuals that go directly to Google. So if I come here and I'm saying I want to go directly to Google, that's, that's basically what the search network is. That's it. So plumbers, Atlanta, someone does a search. I know I'm only showing up in the Google search results. These are local service ads, which are pretty popular as well. So if you are a local service ad professional or you know, you're in this, in this realm, you should av absolutely have these ads uh, running uh, for yourself on top of standard Google ads, Google, uh, Google ads as well. So highly recommended uh, from, uh, from that standpoint. In addition to that, um, we always recommend do not have display select as a, as a network turned on. It usually translates into a ton of impressions, you know, a lower cost, you know, click through rate. It doesn't really do as much justice on the front end of a campaign. Maybe you want to turn it on after the fact, after you've really gotten the campaign humming and you feel like you need to reach more people. But don't turn it on the front end. Um, that's how you limit the waste on the front end of a campaign. Also, we're going to look at a lot of our search terms. Um, that, that we think are going to make a difference and try to build up negatives on the front end. So a great example is like, you know, if I have a, if I have a higher education client that's looking to get a master's in nursing, there's a lot of people that are actually also looking for jobs. And so you don't want to show up for, you know, job, career, you know, free video, how to, those kinds of terms that aren't relevant to a master's in nursing. So if you take the time to methodically think about those negatives, you are going to save yourself a lot of money on the front end. Um, we actually have a have a um, you know we actually have a template that we use that's really really helpful that ensures that we're not showing up for a lot of that stuff. So that's one thing that you all can consider. You know we'll we'll be sure to um, add a link to that. Um, always start with phrase and exact match on the front end. Don't start off with broad. Just don't do it. A lot of people at Google will say, yeah, it's a good idea, especially if you, you know, have, you know, CPA bid strategy or mass conversion strategy. No, don't do it. Um, trust me. It's not worth it on the front end. Maybe in the future, but not just yet. And then the last thing, if you go into Google Keyword Planner and you're pulling out keywords and you download that Excel file, do the research hand pick the keywords themselves. Um, we always, always recommend this for any and all clients. And I mean, I can't tell you how often people will download keywords from Google Keyword Planner, they'll upload it to their platform or, you know, in, into their, you know, Google, Google, um, Google AdWords editor, um, start building their campaigns in single, single keyword ad groups. And then they're like, oh man, I'm getting all this erroneous traffic. Well, Part of the reason is because you just took every single keyword under the sun. If you handpick your keywords, send it to the client for approval, or if you approve it yourself, you're ensuring that you're getting in front of the audience that you intend to get your message in front of. And I mean, there's other things that we do, but out of this eight, nine tactics, you're going to reduce at least 40 to 70% of waste. I promise you that. Um, this is the process that we typically go through. It's straightforward. There's a lot more complexities and nuances, but to really make this simple for everyone, if you're doing these things, when you're when I talk about competitor research, if you do your searches on Google that way, you can get some ideas. I mean, all of that's going to make a difference. And this is not just for a simple, you know, thousand dollar client. I mean, we're doing this kind of blocking and tackling best practice wise for, you know, fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollar per month clients that have very complex campaigns. The, the fundamentals still hold true, and this is how you ensure 
that your campaigns are going to limit itself of waste on the front end. So I thank you everyone for taking the time. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you all in the next one.